So I'll speak to you about the SDG, the people, data, and leapfrogging. I'm going to tie the, the four pieces together by the end of my, my, my speech. First, we must understand, and I believe, and I want to, to, to work towards this, to make Ghana a smart Ghana, not just Ghana, but smart Ghana, using the cliche of smartphone, smart country, but smart Ghana. But first, we must establish the foundation that our president said on June 7th. He says we have an exuberant and young, growing population that wants the best of what the world has to offer, and they will not settle for third world or developing world standards. No, they will not. We Ghanaians have an adventurous people who are in a hurry for success. He says that he has no doubt that the talents, energies, and sense of enterprise and innovation of the Ghanaian can be harnessed to make Ghana the place where dreams come true. All of these SDGs are about dreams. We talk about these 17 SDGs, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water, uh, clean energy, and all of these 17 SDGs boil down to one thing, you. The people are the center of the SDG. It provides each one of us huge, I say huge opportunities for you as an individual to be part of the SDG, not be out of it, be part of it, monitor its progress, and improve your life and the life of people around you. Look at this picture. Poverty, I can see poverty right here. Then I can see technology. For me, poverty plus technology must not be about data of money. I call it social data. Data that exists in the context of, social, of society. Why and how? If you look at this triangle, you see the physical strength, the virtual strength, and the socialization. And I explain why and how this is very important for Africa, for Ghana, for that matter. What do you see? I see our ancestors, our forefathers. All that they did then was just using raw kappa, their raw strength to walk, to talk, to eat, to communicate, to, to, to work, to farm, to hunt, or just their strength, their muscles. That's all that they did, they, they did then, and the ability to produce was just limited because it depended on their physical strength. But then there's a whole new, there was a whole new drive to move from physical strength to virtual strength. Virtualizing this energy that they used to find food, to hunt, to farm, to communicate into a different, virtualizing it to make it more productive. The countries, the government, the people that saw that vision to move the physical strength to virtual strength were driven by, by the ability to improve the life of their people. In the process, they created a huge economy. Job, jobs were created. People became rich. Countries developed fast. A lot of innovation. Henry Ford, Alexander, Alexander Bell, Andrew Andrew Carnegie, and all of these innovations came out to move from physical to virtual. There's a lot of activities that happen around that line. We, Africans, Ghanaians, we are coming very late in the game. In this line here, you have the Europeans, the Americans, have moved to virtualize a lot of their strength and their activities. We are coming up last. But that is not where we are today. Today, what you find is that socialization is driving a new trend, a new, a new development, a new digital economy, where a lot of people are making a lot of money and impacting the world in the process. So socialization is just the ability to connect and live within the society, and I'll explain that a little, a little bit further. Look at this. What do you see? A new economy, new young billionaires. New jobs being created by the like of Facebook, Uber, and, 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 and WhatsApp, and all of these social, because they, are late, they understood that from the physical to the virtual, created this old economy where a lot of jobs were created. But now there's this need to socialize 
the technology, the physical and the virtual, and creating a whole lot of, a lot of money and jobs in that process. And we come in at this stage of the game. We come in at this stage in the game, and it's important to note that inherently, many of the countries that are, that are leading the social technology and social media and social data, as I call it, are countries that culturally are individualistic. We as Africans and Ghanaians are, are collectivistic. We live in society, we, we care for one another, we, we, we relate in groups, we have a sense of belonging, we have a duty to group, we live in harmony with everybody around us, we don't focus on ourselves. So where technology and the new economy is leading us, it's bringing us to where we are strong, where we have our competitive advantage. And that is where I believe that as leaders of Africa, as leaders of Ghana, as leaders of new generation leaders, you must begin to leverage this new technology to move our country forward and address the challenges that exist in our countries and then be able to move the SDGs forward. We cannot achieve the SDGs without data, without social data. So intelligence around data is at the center of the digital economy for SDGs. We want to leapfrog. We want to leverage this data to leapfrog. We have companies like Google, you have many companies out there. If you go out in the world, in the, West, in the Western world, the same amount of data that they generate in their day to day is what we generate today. Education data, healthcare data, market data, shopping data, all sorts of data that are being generated that the Facebooks and, and, and the, 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 the Ubers and WhatsApp and the Airbnbs and all of these companies making huge money are leveraging this data that their people generate. And look at the population of Africa. Look at the same data that we generate. I submit to you today, we cannot be behind of this curve because we have the competitive advantage. So from the first picture that you have that I show you one person with technology, now you have three people with technology. The difference here, I say this picture is wrong because there's no improvement in the life of these people, but they are using technology. I would like to see these lives being developed, improved, because we are providing them with the right, because they are generating the data. Data about their farms, their cows, the activities are being generated. In return, their life must improve. We cannot, as leaders, depend on the Western world to leverage our own data to improve the lives of these people, to improve our life. We, as leaders of this world, must leverage our own data, must leverage where technology is to improve the life of our own people. It provides us with a lot of opportunities. The theme of this event today is dreams we dare not. We dare not dream to follow this pattern of continuing to just implement technology and then leveraging data that is not accurate, that is not timely delivered so people cannot use it. We cannot follow that pattern. We dare not dream that way. We want to dream to leapfrog and disrupt that process and provide a new way of doing things that we then become the part, the piece, the farmer of data. We don't just want to have just farmers of cocoa or farmers of cashew or farmers of, of cassava, but you must now begin to have data farmers because the opportunity is there. And when these data farmers rise up and begin to identify opportunities to harvest this data and use it for policy and use it to monitor the government and use it to push one another to be better, that is when we can achieve and be able to meet and even exceed the SDG as we call them. I will say, Ghana, I want to believe, as I stated before, wants to be at the forefront of this, of this digital revolution. And I cannot complete by quoting our president that is providing this able, able leadership. He says, everywhere in the world when you go, you find Ghanaians. There's a strong spirit of enterprise and survival. President, the president of Ghana reminded us in his inaugural speech that being a Ghanaian must stand for something more than just holding a birth certificate or a certain passport. Calling yourself a Ghanaian must mean that you have signed up to a certain definable code and conduct. Being a Ghanaian puts an obligation on each one of us to work at building a fair, prosperous, and happy nation. And calling yourself a Ghanaian must mean we look out for each other. 
there should be no higher praise than to be able to say, I am a Ghanaian. The president says he will, he will rekindle the spirit that made Ghana the leading light on the African continent and make our conditions deserving of that accolade. We can say today, in 1957, when we had our independence, we say we are the first sub-Saharan country to have achieved independence. And I will say that this data around the SDG provide Ghana and each one of us an opportunity to also provide this leadership to help Africa and especially Ghana leapfrog the development and improvement in the life of our people. This is where we are today. So I must dream. The team says, I dare, the dream, I dare, I dare, dream, I dare not dream. I want to dream. I want to dream of an Africa where data drives decision. I want to dream of an Africa where data collection is not painful. I want to dream of an Africa where we have multiple data farmers. Dream of an Africa where leaders recognize the importance of data gathering and the timely delivery of it. Had their dream of Ghana becoming a, live, becoming a smart country where the life of our people are improved. Never again should it be possible to say we did not know. Never again should it be possible for the government, for the institutions, for the leaders to say we did not know because the data is available. Never again should we say we did not know. No one should be invisible. This is the world that we want to be in because every day as we live, we generate this data. The government, you as an institution, you as an individual must realize that to leapfrog and achieve and exceed these SDGs, Social data is the core of it. I cannot end my speech without telling you what the government is doing around this. <clears throat> In addition to macroeconomic indicators, I will say that there are three major pillars that the government is doing. <clears throat> the first one is building a digital addressing system where we can move beyond giving directions by, uh, by, by, by using landmark, cocoa sellers as landmark or potholes as landmark one guy was giving direction. He said, after you meet, after you go past the third pothole, you turn right. But then what, what if the potholes are fixed? And I'm lost. We cannot continue to allow that. Never again, as I said before. All of this is not possible if we put our mind to it. So the government is building the, a digital addressing system where each one of us will know where we reside. We can go from one place to another. We dare not follow this. We cannot go by doing street naming and numbering and all this stuff. For 60 years, we have not been able to achieve this. But this year, the government of our president, Nana Adodankwa Kufwado, said he will, he will implement the digital addressing system that each Ghanaian will know exactly where he or she lives. The second one is a national identification project where each one of us will have an ID, a unique number that will trace you from birth to death, then we'll be able to generate enough data to help facilitate the, the policy that is required for our development. Third pillar is the financial inclusion. We have a very informal economy to make it formal. We must make it easy for each one of our citizens to have access to the financial sector, a bank account, and leverage the benefits that come with it. May I say more? I'll then stop here and say this. We are at a crossroads. In Ghana, we have the able leadership of our president and the vice president. The president ended his speech by saying that he does not want you to be a spectator. He wants you to be part of this movement. Let us achieve. Let us be the generation that when they look back to us and say it was in our time, that we leverage social data to plug a lot of loopholes in our economy and improve the life of our citizens significantly. These are a couple of, these are seven productivity tools that you can take good note of it. When you go home, look at it and see where it can help improve your life. Statistic, Statista, Evernote, Scannable, Mint, Sunrise, To Do East, and then the Christian Bombs Business Resources. These are good resources that I believe that if you leverage, 
that will improve your life and make you more productive. Thank you very much.